In this video, you will learn how to configure the OT Base Asset Discovery Engine for exporting configuration data to the OT Base Asset Center. Let's briefly review the overall OT Base product architecture. The OT Base Asset Discovery Engine automatically discovers the identity and configuration of your PLCs, RTUs, operator stations, servers, and network gear. In a full OT based deployment, this data is then sent to the OT based asset center, where it is consolidated with configuration data from other networks and with metadata provided by users and third parties such as vendors. The OT based asset center can be accessed by users via a web browser and it can also be accessed by third party applications using a REST API. This video only focuses on how to configure an OT Base Asset Discovery node properly for passing data to the OT Base Asset Center. Such configuration only needs to be done on the side of the asset discovery because the link is unidirectional. The OT Base Asset Center never talks back to an asset discovery node and therefore doesn't need to be configured. Data transport is achieved by passing a file from asset discovery to the asset center. Since these files are encrypted by default, you don't need to worry about cybersecurity. Let's go through the required configuration settings step by step. First, click on Configure. In this dialog box, click on Export. This upper area allows you to specify the destination of the transfer and is set to none by default. Certainly you want to change that, otherwise no export will take place. The first option is an HTTP POST and this is the re recommended option if the destination OT based asset center can be reached directly from the asset discovery node. In this case all you need to do is to specify the IP address or host name of the OT based asset center. As the path name you specify agent sync slash agent sync slash agentsync.php In the case where you cannot reach the destination OT base asset center directly, you can transfer the configuration data to an intermediate server using again an HTTP POST request. A scenario would be that you need to transfer configuration files through a DMZ. And if in that DMZ there, there is a an intermediate server residing that accepts HTTP POST requests, you would specify the IP address or host name of that intermediate server here and you can also provide a path name where the resulting data is stored. Next option is an SSH link. Again, this would apply if you cannot reach the OT base asset center directly. In this case, you can transfer configuration data using SSH to an intermediate server. Provide the IP address or host name in this field, any path or directory information in this field, and user and password required for authentication for the SSH link. Finally, you have the option to just uh, store the configuration data as a file and the directory of that file can be specified here in this field. There are two scenarios how this is, is useful. The first scenario is that you uh, cannot directly reach any destination network for further transfer to the OT base asset center. For example, in the case of an error gapped network. In this scenario, you would simply store configuration data locally and at some point in time, you would collect the configuration files manually and transfer it to the destination network, for example, using a USB stick. The second scenario is that you can reach an intermediate server uh, by a shared folder. So in this scenario, you can specify the name of the shared folder in this directory field and then the configuration file will be stored in that specific shared folder. Down here you can specify the time of the export and just note that this is in 24-hour format so the default is 2 a.m. 
and you can just uh, specify any time of day that you want so 20 would translate to 8 p.m finally don't forget to check this box for for just specifying that uh, the export is active because otherwise no export will take place at least no automatic export that's pretty much it concerning the transfer of configuration data from the ot base asset discovery node to the asset center however we are not quite done yet so the what we have to do next is to make sure that some important metadata are set appropriately let's start with the general data and especially with the asset discovery node name every ot based asset discovery node must have a unique name for ot based asset center to distinguish between the various nodes and this is the name that you set in this field in our example it is set to kwr-10 now you can use any name that you like any name that makes sense for you just remember that the name must be unique theoretically the node name could be the name of a specific network but just keep in mind that ot based asset discovery does support multiple networks so in case your node is connected to multiple networks obviously it wouldn't make sense to use the name of one network as the name of the node especially considering that the node name is used as a prefix for generating device identifiers when importing configuration data into the ot base asset center next is the probing tab in this configuration dialog where you can specify how asset discovery has identified location information in the destination rtus plcs etc now here's the thing the snmp protocol allows you to set location information in the endpoints so first if your location data is stored as an id then you have the option to just use the snmp location that it is that is set in the device or to provide a prefix to the snmp location so just as an example if your location id that is set via snmp only identifies a specific cabinet but you also want to um, to indicate the room or the the site name the factory name of that cabinet then you can add that as a prefix in this field and now the second option sometimes location data is not referenced by a unique identifier but by a path which is much more human readable so unfortunately those two options are in practical use today but the good news is that ot base supports both so in case uh, you do use a symbolic name a path name for identifying location ot base can also accommodate for now for that again this could be coded in the snmp location data field and if that is the case the difference to the location id is that a location path always uses delimiters to um, distinguish between the various components of that path and you have the opportunity in this field to specify which character is used as a delimiter in many cases it is uh, just the the uh, semicolon but it could also be a slash or a dash or or whatever uh, the person who stored that data thought was appropriate and by telling ot base which character is used as a delimiter ot base can make sense out of your data and translate it to the more standardized form that is used in the ot base asset center if no snmp location path was set you can also set location a location path in this field manually so you could specify uh, your um, factory name as an example room names uh, you could specify a, a cabinet name but don't forget to also tell ot base what you have used as the delimiter finally 
if you do have an SNMP location, then uh, you can prefix it with some additional data. So let's just assume your SNMP location, just in this example above with the location ID, it doesn't start with the factory name, but you are using OT base to manage uh, OT devices in multiple factories. Then you can uh, specify the factory ID in that prefix. That may sound like a lot of fuss for the location data, but I think it's going to be much clearer if you look at the OT based asset center and how it stores location information. So in, in our screen, you see the inventory area and we have selected locations where all the location data is stored. And the natural way for OT base to display location data is in a tree. So in our example, we have North America as one of the root elements and be below that USA. And then we have opened a specific plant. And in that plant, we have several areas. We have rooms, we have cabinets. Now, if we look at a, a specific cabinet, just like this, like, like our cabinet C in the body and white section, you see the full path name up here in this, in this upper line. However, there is the, um, the ID information inserted. So the ID for this cabinet is fr.biw.c. Now, if your asset discovery node or if your SNMP information in a given device is set to fr.biw.c, then that's all that's needed for all those assets to be associated with that one specific cabinet. As simple as that, if you are using that type of location ID. If you are using names and paths, it's a little bit different because a cabinet C could be located in multiple factories, in multiple rooms, and certainly Cabinet C is probably not the best way to identify a given cabinet. However, if I, uh, if I look at the full tree, so I have identified the, uh, the specific factory, I have identified the section, maybe even the room, then cabinet C might make sense. But cabinet C would never uh, be a good location ID. Now, since uh, OT base supports those two different ways how to identify location, what you would need to do if cabinet C is used in, 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 uh, as the location name in a given endpoint, then you would need to specify the other components of that path. And also you need to specify the delimiter that you're using. And again, your endpoints would be associated automatically with that cabinet C. So what you would do is you would specify body in white in our example. And if um, you're supporting multiple factories, you would also specify the, the, the plant name, the factory name, where this body in white section actually is. There is one final setting that we need to worry about before we are done, and that is in the network settings. Just remember, you can uh, use OTBS asset discovery for discovering multiple networks if uh, the asset discovery node is connected to more than one network. And what you have to do when um, uh, using a full OT based deployment, every network needs to have a unique symbolic name. So such as plant bus 55 in our example. So this would not be a good idea. You cannot leave the, the name field empty unless you don't want to export data from these networks to the OT based asset center. So if you don't set a name, this data will not be exported. So in, in our configuration, data from these two networks will be exported. But again, keep in mind that the name must be unique. So uh, there, if, if you have um, an, an additional OT based asset discovery node uh, in a different location, and you're also using the name plant bus 55 to identify th those, uh, th that network, then this will result in trouble. Just to give you an idea what happens with that symbolic name, 
It is used in OT base asset center when uh, for OT base to manage all those various networks. It is perfectly fine if you're using identical IP addresses for different networks, but you cannot use identical names. So in the uh, inventory in the networks list, you will see all your networks listed by symbolic name. And with that, we're almost done. The last thing that I need to tell you is that you have these two additional options up here for manual data export. So the, uh, the automatic scheduled export that we had configured here is used auto autonomously every 24 hours. But if you want to manually check uh, that your uh, asset discovery node is uh, configured properly, if you want to manually check the export pathway to the asset center, you can do that by just clicking on this button right here and then the the export to the ot base asset center will occur right away another use case where you want to take advantage of that is if you are um, using a laptop to discover configurations and this laptop does not have a connection to to an OTA based asset center and just assume for example you're discovering networks and configurations during a factory acceptance test so you're doing it off-site and now all the configuration data is stored on your laptop and once you're back at work you can uh, connect your laptop to the network where OT based asset center resides or at least where you have the pathway to the OT based asset center and then export all the configuration data manually by just clicking that button and finally this button right here export the file allows you to export the current configuration data to a file right away and since you can also specify the um, the name of the file and the directory this would also be um, um, one option how to store the current configuration file on an, a usb stick or other removable media that you can then uh, just uh, move to someplace else where you have a better opportunity to import the data to ot base asset center and that's all you need to know for exporting data from OT Base Asset Discovery to OT Base Asset Center. If you are using an OT Base Asset Discovery evaluation that you have downloaded from Langner.com, don't forget that the, you have the opportunity to go for a full scale evaluation involving the OT Base Asset Center. And if you're interested in that option, uh, please feel free to contact us using our web form.